We've talked to you periodically for an update on how this process has gone with your goal of really making it easier to vote for the people in and around Atlanta. What's your update as of today, Election Day? Well, we continue to believe that over the past three weeks, early voting in the state of Georgia has been remarkably uh, successful, if you will. Um, and, and I do want to make clear the State Farm Arena in the runoff was open for the first week of the runoff and, and had extraordinary numbers, I might add. But we also introduced and helped and trained our friends at Mercedes-Benz Stadium and the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, Arthur Blank, has jumped into the, shall we say, early voting process, making his stadium available, helping even further with early voting, making it accessible, making it efficient, making it safe, uh, frankly, making it in and out in under 20 minutes. Uh, this is all part of the process, we think, that has helped uh, the voting process. So, 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 Tony, you are first and foremost a very astute investor, and so you pay attention to results, measurable results. How are you going to measure success here? How are you going to measure yourself and say, yes, we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish or not? Oh, we, we measure success by whether or not we're helping get out the vote. Uh, not who wins, but whether we help get out the vote. And there's no doubt that early voting at State Farm Arena and Mercedes-Benz Stadium helped get out the vote, helped people put, or I should say, go to vote with a, with a better, more comfortable feeling that it could happen in 20 minutes and not five hours. Uh, so to me, that process has helped. And I, I think, if anything, uh, if you looked at uh, the city of Atlanta or Metro Atlanta a year or two ago vis-a-vis -vis voting and access to voting, I don't think it was something we'd all be proud of. Uh, but I would say today we're very proud of the ability for folks to get out to vote and, frankly, the numbers uh, that are out there voting. So we should all be proud of that. Tony, it's terribly important for all of us as U.S. citizens to encourage as many people to vote as possible. But put this into the context of you as a citizen of Atlanta, of Georgia, how this fits into a community that's very troubled, as so many communities are across the country, by the pandemic, by the economic aftermath of the pandemic. Uh, how does this fit in to really try to put back together your community to try to help it heal? Well, I, I think every citizen wants a voice and the ability to vote is the voice. So the, the inability to vote takes away that voice. So uh, every community should make voting more accessible if they can. And sometimes, as I think we said earlier, David, I just want to, you know, sometimes the public sector needs help from the private sector. And when, uh, you know, if you will, uh, if you have a, a basketball arena or a football stadium and you happen to be in a pandemic and it happens not to be uh, getting used as frequently as we wish it could be, let's use it for other benefits that help the community. Uh, and, and I think that's precisely what we've done and we're proud of it. How has that private partner, uh, public partnership worked with the officials, the voting officials down in Georgia? There's been a lot of talk about some of these people. I got a lot more press than, frankly, they probably wanted to have in recent days. How has it been working with them, and what is your assessment of how they've held up to a lot of pressure and a lot of scrutiny? Well, the, listen, uh, there, there's been an enormous amount of training and work involved uh, for Hawks employees, for public uh, voting officials to be trained. And, and for what it's worth, we think the process worked very well. Um, it, it's, of course, an incredibly close election. It will be an inc incredibly close runoff, it appears. But the numbers, i.e. of getting the vote out, have gone up considerably in Georgia and across the country. And by the way, the vote uh, and the process has worked. Uh, I, I'm not sure who would... Uh, there are folks arguing with that, but uh, based on the process, I think people should have comfort in the fact that we're getting more people to vote and to use their voice. That, that's a positive, no matter what side of the aisle you might sit on. Uh, Tony, there's no doubt in talking to you over the recent weeks that uh, you're trying to do good down there. Can you also do well, and, and well particularly for the Hawks franchise? As a citizen there, does it affect you as a sports franchise when you really participate in the local community? And I will say it's not just in voting that you've been doing down there in Atlanta. Listen, we, we've committed ourselves, uh, and we think we are a community asset, whether we're helping in voting rights, whether we're helping in K-12 public education, uh, whether we're helping with black economic empowerment, uh, whether we're helping with, frankly, the, uh, the, the empowerment of black financial institutions and the refinancing of certain uh, loans that we might have as, a, as an organization or as a franchise. 
Uh, no, we're, we're proud of the fact that we think we are helping the community we live in. Uh, and by the way, making State Farm Arena a voting location that makes voting more accessible, please understand, we've had enormously positive support from uh, all of our fan base, uh, from black, from white, from Republican, from Democrat, uh, from Hispanic, from Asian. The, 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 the support has been uh, really enormous uh, to help make voting more accessible. That, that's been a positive. I don't know whether that helps us uh, make more money long term or whether we have more fans as a result. Uh, but I do think the commitment we have to being a positive member of the community to help where we can, um, I think it's the right thing to do. And I think hopefully it will help our franchise. But uh, we lost a tough game last night to the Knicks. So uh, hopefully it'll help us on the court down the road. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> last the, night. the Knicks are doing a bit better this year so far, I must say. But I wanted to ask you about that, conclude really on what's going on with the NBA. Last time we talked, you were just on the cusp of starting the season again with a lot of restrictions, a lot of restrictions because of COVID. You're out from the bubble in Orlando. Thus far, how is it going? How, how is it working for your players, for your organization, for the league in general? Well, there's no doubt it, it's a strange uh, environment to have uh, quality basketball played without fans. But yet, uh, and really to the credit of, of the players, uh, the quality of basketball on the court has been remarkable, uh, even though you don't have the excitement uh, and the energy of fans in the arena. So the quality of basketball has been superb. Um, I, I think everyone in the NBA appreciates this is a uh, day to day and we have to try our best and we have to make sure that we follow the rules and the regulations which have been uh, some would say excessive but certainly uh, very very cautious uh, trying to protect not just the players but all the folks in basketball operations all the folks uh, that are working in the arena all the the referees all, all of the folks putting these games on uh, including uh, media folks, et cetera. So we're trying to be super cautious. We know that it's not easy. Uh, but so far, I think we should be pretty proud of ourselves. Um, and, and I think uh, we're getting very good ratings, at least, uh, from fans on television and uh, various media sources. So, so that's the good news. Um, but listen, it's a long season, uh, yeah. not as long as usual, only 72 games. Yeah. But we'll see as we go. And, and I do think so far, so good, I think would be my argument.